Namaskar and Adab to all my friends from your friend astrologer and guide Irfan once more with you from your very own channel Astro Assurance. We have been doing a number of series and amongst that one of the series we are doing is also of the planets in different houses and different signs. Amongst that one series which we have already completed is about the planets in different houses in both the D1 chart as well as the D9 chart also planets and different houses in the different signs in the D1 chart and now we are in the midst of doing different planets in the different signs in the 12 signs in the D9 chart in the Navamsa chart. We have already completed four videos of planets placed in different signs in the D9 chart. Today I am talking about a very important placement though all of the planetary placements are important but today's planetary placement is about the placement of the planet moon in the 12 signs in the Navamsa chart. Now we know moon is a manasa or manas or the mind as well as emotions a heart and wherever moon is placed in whichever nakshatra the nakshatra lord dasha starts first wherever moon is placed that becomes a ruling rashi. So moon's importance in Vedic astrology is second to none. So, placement of moon in any house and sign has to be given due importance, especially when it gets into the different signs in the D9 chart because the D1 chart is a bag of possibilities, but the D9 chart is a bag of probabilities, a higher probability is given to you. The D1 chart is more about what we can achieve. But the D9 chart is more about what is given to us, whereas the D1 chart is what is offered to us. It's a big difference what something is offered or when something is given. It is like you asking a friend what you will like to have rather than take this, this is what you deserve. So the D9 chart is about high probabilities, what is given to us by the zodiac. So whatever placement in the D9 chart is, it's about the zodiac choosing that result for us. And so if we live our life by default, there is high probability that event, that result, that situation will come by for us. So if you need to go against the placement in the D9 chart specifically, that much more effort is required, that much more attitude is required, that much more willpower, that much more motivation is required to, against, to go against the grain. So the placement of planets in the D9 chart is very important. So let's jump into and look at how the different planetary placements today we are talking about moon when placed in the 12 different signs in the D9 chart will bring about different results for us. Now when moon is in the Aries sign what does it do for us? It gives you an impetus to a fiery attachment to goals, to tasks, to milestones. It even gives us an emotional connect to the goals a person has and there is a higher element of caring, nourishment, supporting involved with the moon in Aries and this person with the moon in Aries will go all out for a cause or for a goal that he or, he or he or she feels connected to emotionally as well. They feel attached to that. The Navamsa moon is what is given to you emotionally. So you can't escape it. So you better cope with it. So the emotions given to you are at the soul's level to connect to the goals at hand and to deliver accordingly. So now based on where the moon is in the D1 chart, so the opportunity, the challenges will also act accordingly for you. So if moon is in Leo, in the D1 chart, in the Leo sign, in the Lagna chart, then the person will be strongly attracted towards goal achievements, towards his love, towards his interest, towards his investments and other emotional and other causes which the person feels attached to. His or her, the person's focus will be towards power, influence and a strong emotional connect towards it. The person will put all effort in attaining goals with a fierce resolve and will also have a strong willpower to manifest them. Now the moon in the Taurus sign. We know that moon gets exalted in the Taurus sign. Similarly, moon in the Taurus sign in the Navamsa also gets added strength. Though exaltation or debilitation is seen in the Lagna chart, however, when a planet is seen as exalted or debilitated in the Navamsa chart, that means that planet does have a strong energy, may not be as strong as the exaltation or debilitation in the Lagna chart, but surely competing with that energy in the Navamsa chart. So, moon in Taurus is in an exaltation mode, though not exalted, at the deepest level, at the soul's level. The focus and emotions of such a person are towards arts, 
monies, financial gains, better quality of life, uh, rich emotions, emotions which are positive and these emotions are used positively to either enhance others, uplift others rather than to destroy anyone using your emotional energy, especially negative energies. So in the Navamsa, it has an even deeper connect that the soul itself feels the tranquility if the tasks and objectives are achieved. Now the tasks are at hand are not just at the material level but even at the soul level. So the person with the moon in Taurus in the Navamsa will use the exaltation energies to enhance not only their own lives but also help many others with a strong emotional but empathetic and understanding oriented resolve as if the zodiac has specifically chosen this person to do that. Now based on what sign the moon is placed in the D1 chart in the Lagna chart while placed in the Taurus sign in the Navamsa, those results will come out accordingly. So for example, if moon is in the Libra sign, in the D1 chart, in the Lagna chart, then relations could be very healthy, very supportive, very nurturing and only after going through the initial phases of challenges and upheavals will those results come by to you. The person initially may be even betrayed by someone close to them but others will come out and rescue the person out, out of his or her emotional predicament to heal and to support the person and to also give a high degree of empathy. The zodiac will also bring forth those people who will support you, heal you in the long run and you will make great assets and financial gains and nurture harmonious relationships as the time goes by. Now moon in the Gemini sign. Moon in Gemini combines the changing, adaptable and sometimes the confused energy of Gemini with the emotional aspect of the moon. So this creates situations that the person wants absolute clarity, surety of events and situations and the people that they are going to work with. If they don't have the clarity then they are not completely at ease. If not, the person becomes confused, less confident searches for answers just to make sure and wants to be doubly sure than moon's placement in any other sign. So the person will flip-flop between high confidence on one side, medium confidence sometimes, going to extreme low confidence, sometimes be absolutely terrified because of the unsurety or even of probable failure. So this person often is restless but if someone but is someone who likes to communicate and talk about these issues and will not brush them under the carpet. In the Navamsa, what does this placement do? Especially depending on how it is placed in the Dagna chart. So this is how a person will be given a default mode by the zodiac itself to live in. So this person sometimes can be dual minded, changeable sensitive or ultra sensitive to situation especially if the person doesn't get a grip on what is being real and what and not being in control. So a person with moon in Gemini sign in the Navams has to be careful as how will they handle this energy because this is, give, this is a high probable energy and such people need to learn to be on the positive side and to be more adaptable and sensitive. But on the other hand, it can surely make a person go through big ups and downs on like an emotional roller coaster ride. So once again, depending on what sign moon is placed in the Lagna chart, in the D1 chart, those placements will also manifest themselves accordingly. If for example, a moon is in Sagittarius sign in the D1 chart, in the Lagna chart, then the person will be more risk prone and changeable to sudden events. The person because of the duality of the Gemini sign will try to be more adept and be more prepared even while being more jovial, more fun loving, upbeat, friendly and even good humored. This person will put in extra effort in gathering information, in learning about something before they take more risks and before they decide on anything because they will not be able to back out easily later. So such people can take more time in decision making and sometimes are very unclear about their decisions but still will try their utmost to make it more probable and reasonable.
This person may take up more than one degree in education just to make doubly sure that they are qualified enough, that they are competent enough, or learn more than one computer language, or fluctuate between two different career options or prospects. Sometimes because of turn of events, sometimes because of not being sure what to do. Now, moon in the Cancer sign. This is a strong placement when moon goes in the Cancer sign because this gives such a person very strong, eminent strength of emotional steadfastness, sensitivity towards people and also towards situations and causes. It is as if the zodiac has chosen you to be intrinsically protective, nurturing of others. So in various situations and even with those who you may care less about or others may care less about you, you will still have feelings to be able to help them and you will feel for them even when there is not such lack of even when they have not been supportive to you, they have not been helpful to you because you want to not see them in distress. And in fact, this may come out for most of those who have been dejected or rejected, rejected you or caused you turmoil that you still want to come to their rescue. This makes you more nurturing, supportive, even when you have not enjoyed the same sense of emotional support and nourishment personally from anybody else. Now, if moon is in the Capricorn sign, in the D1 chart, in the Lagna chart, then such a person can be very steadfast in their commitment to nurturing and supporting others almost as a duty, especially when moon is in the Cancer sign in the Navamsa, but in the Capricorn sign in the D1 chart. However, emotions are more practical for this person and they are in more control and the person is able to exercise greater stability in their emotion even when connected at the deeper level to nourish, nourish others, to understand others and to empathize with others. Their work may also consist of doing things or being connected to such responsibilities which are more supportive, which are more nourishing, which are more helpful in nature. For example, in uh, customer service, in medicine, in uh, public life, in banking, wherever they need to be more in control of the emotions, yet be more supportive and yet be more caring. Now, if moon is in the Leo sign in the Navamsa chart, this is a very confident energy, very warm energy and warm heartedness and, magnam and magnanimity, which comes naturally to this person. Very self-reliant and sure of themselves, even while needing to feel more in control and to feel more powerful in this in this placement of moon in Leo in the Navamsa. This person will take accountability through seeking more responsibility of others' development, others' welfare and through that helping others will seek power and influence. So it is an indirect road to power and influence and authority. This is a born leader because here moon is in the Leo sign in the Navamsa. It is almost as zodiac has given you that power. And so this person is more empathetic towards team members, feels for them, struggles for them and will always have the warmth for fellow workers but still will be ruthless if the person gets up, ex, uh, upset and will explode with rage if pushed too hard especially if the person feels that the person's self-respect or dignity is at stake. If moon is in the Pisces sign in the D1 chart while being in the Leo sign in the in the D9 chart, in the Navamsa chart, then the person can also be somewhat of an idealistic leader for whom loyalty, commitment, these are very, very important and this person will stand by those people who will be loyal to them and will also take care of their growth, especially when reciprocated with respect and followership. A very imaginative, sensitive leader or someone who takes leadership in a situation and uses their kindness, their sympathetic nature and through that being able to command respect and admiration rather than demanding a leadership position. So a person who can go through feelings of absolutely being in control to complete dejection and also melancholic sometimes on good days to bad days but a good energy to have nevertheless. Now if moon is in the Virgo sign in the D9 chart in the Navamsa chart this is a person who doesn't openly express their emotions most of the time the emotions are bottled up inside as the Navamsa is more probable manifestation of a planet's dignity, so this is as if the zodiac has commanded the person to be bottled up and hold back their emotions rather than getting upset or angry. So this person is not sure whether they are right in feeling angry or upset and many times holds back not only emotions of anger but even of joy, 
or any show of emotions very rarely will this person show the real person inside them and even their laughter or their sadness or their sadness is more subdued than others unless they have strong planetary placements otherwise they can also come across as deeply introverted almost as if hiding their feelings not easy to get behind what is actually happening in their minds or what is happening in their heart even to the closest to them sometimes these people may not be able to define what clearly they want and what their emotional state is also yet the person is attached to serving others being more caring even motherly almost as if commanded by the zodiac even while being critical admonishing even while strongly being this perfectionist in the eyes of the other now connect the placement of moon in the virgo sign in the d9 chart with the placement of moon in which sign it is in the lagna chart in the d1 chart so if moon is in say for example virgo sign in the navamsa but goes into the scorpio sign in the d1 chart in the lagna chart then this person will go through challenges in the emotions in their mental capacity to remain sober and will be very less emotionally charged and not will get affected and will not get negatively affected even will try to fathom with their virgo energies in the navamsa as to what the reasons are for their emotion the person will feel passionately about some people some events or situations yet try to showcase an external demeanor of being in calm being in control and not shaken but inside there may be a storm of emotions and a strong emotional analytical threshold is being crossed again and again to figure out how to control the situation or how to feel about it so these people are very good at investigative research oriented work due to the investigative nature of scorpio coupled with the highly analytical approach of virgo and as long as they don't let the emotional upheavals to get the better of them and given to the intensity of flaring up and being destructively vengeful about others this can be a good energy but if the person is not able to control their emotions then this can be some of the most destructive force that any human can conjure up so a passionately cold blooded individual but an emotionally charged opponent who can destroy at will as well as they can create now if moon is in the libra sign in the d9 chart in the navamsa chart this is the person who has been identified by the zodiac to use the ability to create bonds partnership synergy of energies or relation in almost all their endeavors almost all their plans almost in all their outputs because here moon is in the libra sign in the navamsa so this is highly probable this is the person who will keep relationships at the forefront to get things done to feel happy to feel in control and to even to feel alive a person who will be very diplomatic but will try and keep the peace and seldom will voice their unhappiness openly but tactfully to even those who they resent a sense of balance and being fair is important to these people and sometimes they are confused as to what is really fair and hence in trying to keep the balance almost end up at the receiving end themselves as for them the scales for them are always tilted in the favor of others now connect the placement of moon in the libra sign in the d9 chart to where the moon is placed in the lagna chart in the d1 chart so if moon is in the ary sign in the d1 chart in the lagna chart while being in the libra sign in the navamsa then this is the strong orientation of the person towards achievements through his or her strong ability to form strong connections and bonds this person is very protective of their relation and sometimes can also be very impulsive in how they treat the closest ones this is a very assertive person in their relations and will also be expecting the relations to reciprocate what the individual does for them while the person can be easily angered or aroused yet the person will also try later on to pacify or balance out the situation and may not hesitate to even apologize to keep the peace and harmony a tough energy to contend with in relationship but an excellent energy for goal orientation goal achievement and for partnership now if moon is in the scorpio sign in the navamsa chart in the d9 chart now scorpio sign placement for moon is a tough placement with high upheavals in emotions in their mental balance in their ability to deal with challenges and with challenging situations especially which can take them to the limits of emotional endurance and that's what the zodiac does with moon in scorpio even in the navamsa and stronger in the navamsa because this is a highly probable event so the person's relations will test the person and 
This will be a test to the almost limits and sometimes will churn the person in such a manner that the person is left to gasp for breath. The person is very sensitive to the feelings, emotions of the closest ones and sometimes sacrifices his own emotional well-being and takes on more than they can handle. And so when they are not reciprocated to the extent what the person has done, what the individual has done, then this person is distraught emotionally and lets the situation take a toll on himself or herself because of which the emotional well-being goes down. The person can have strong desires towards intimacy and needs a feel for closeness through their sensual or sexual closeness and also through that as a, as a means of emotional closeness. So the sexual manifestation, the sexual intimacy is also important for them. This person can feel betrayed emotionally when their strong desires or expectations are not met. Then the persons or their emotions or even can become even destructive for them. Now connect where the moon is placed in the Navamsa chart, in the D9 chart to where they are placed in the D1 chart, in the Lagna chart. So if moon is in the sign, say for example of Leo in the D1 chart, in the Lagna chart, while it is in the Scorpio sign in the Navamsa, then the person may put too much at stake in their need to take higher responsibility emotionally. The person will stand by and guard and defend their work, their family, the team members to such an extent that they become emotionally drained at the end of the day. Externally, the Leo energies will get the person to put on an act of confidence, being in control, being self-reliant. However, the person is trying to attract power, influence, loyalty and may love to invest, invest too much emotionally and then may feel let down when things or people don't turn out as they expect them to or they wanted to or hoped. Now let's see how moon behaves in the Sagittarius sign, a fiery sign in the Navamsa in the D9 chart. Now this is a very strong, fun, adventurous, outgoing, highly extroverted energy. The person even if introvert can switch off and on when need be in the situations, especially in those situations where they are around people and they are expected to also perform and will very quickly adapt to the situation at hand. Very enthusiastic, very charming, funny, fitty and has a unique style of communication that can be very captivating, very charming. This person can have very interesting anecdotes and stories to tell and can also lie in such a manner that can be very very convincing and very very entertaining. Very very upbeat mostly and very strong in their beliefs and sense of duty. This is as if the zodiac has chosen the person to bring life to others' lives and to be a guide to others, personally at least, if not professionally. This person has a very strong mind, but a very wandering mind and loves to be in different places at different times and sometimes cannot stick to one place or one job, one role, sometimes even to one relationship if the person gets an energy sapping and boring and taxing relationship or job. Now connect where the moon is in the D1 chart in the Lagna chart while being in the D9 chart in the Sagittarius sign. Say for example if moon is in the Taurus sign in the D1 chart in the Lagna chart then this person can be very sociable, very fun loving but exploring at the same time combining the energies of both Taurus and Sagittarius. The person is steadfast in their needs and wants a good quality of life and yearns for financial security and resources. Is very fun loving but can also be fond of such art forms such as singing, music, dancing. This person wants a good life and will go to extremes to find what one loves, what one desires and for the exclusive experiences experiences and also for the learning oriented experiences can also be very very spiritual. So this person will travel far and wide or be ready to move out, move out of their comfort zones to get what they want especially if the exploration bug takes them. Now how does the moon behave in the Capricorn sign in the D9 chart in the Navamsa chart. Now this is an energy of being very responsible, disciplined and attached to structure and rules and regulation. This is a person who likes to feel in control and is cautious in how they perform their responsibilities, their duties, usually very serious and calm and seldom allow their emotions to get the better of them. For them, work comes first as if the zodiac has decided that these people will be the workhorse of the universe, usually, usually conservative in how they approach life 
and like to be planned and practical. Now connect where the moon is in the D1 chart, in the Lagna chart, while being in the Capricorn sign, in the D9 chart, in the Navamsa chart. Say for example, if moon is in the sign of Gemini, in the D1 chart, then the person will combine their professional and responsible approach, both with the adaptability and the power of influencing others coming from the Gemini sign. This person can use the high professionalism along with tact and power of observation to create partnerships and create strong working bonds. However, if the work situation is not very conducive, not very rewarding, then this person will easily lose their interest and become doubtful of their results and their association with the situation. So, but usually they are very expressive, very intelligent people and will use this quality of being expressive and intelligent in their work area and can do very well in those disciplines that require high influencing ability with tact and professionalism such as in the media. Now if moon is in the Aquarius sign in the D9 chart, in the Navamsa chart, this is a very liberal energy which thinks out of the box and is very solution oriented. This is the person who believes in causes which are bigger than themselves bigger in society and is very attached to his or her dreams and desires. Is relentless in his or her pursuit to accomplish what they feel they will, they need to be successful in and they will put all their heart and soul to it. Their ways are a little bit unusual but they are very logical. They are all for societal reform and they want to bring about an improvement in say for example impoverishment, hunger, as Moon is in Aquarius here, so Moon is also a nourisher and care caregiver, so that's what they want to do. It is as if the zodiac has personally chosen them to be the torchbearer of change, societal improvement and upliftment. Now connect where the Moon is in the D9 chart to where it is placed in the D1 chart, in the Lagna chart. So if, for example, if Moon is in the sign of uh, Cancer in the D1 chart, then this can be a very caring citizen a very caring friend and even a very caring acquaintance. It is for this person not easy to say no and many times this person gets caught in the inability to say no even in situations where they should say no. And so highly creative, imaginative yet sensitive and emotional. So these people come out to be very creative solution bringers especially to challenges with which they can emotionally connect to. These people want that there are no homeless people around the world, especially kids, they feel protective of others, of the environment, toward their family and even near and dear ones or team members. And so these people turn out to be the most reliable in relations, in solving problems and to stand by those who need them the most. Very emotional about their friends and well-wishers, they generally go out of their way to help others even at their own cost. Now, how does Moon behave in the Pisces sign? a very watery sign and moon is also a watery planet. This is a very kind, very positive energy and a person who wants to see an ideal world where everyone is happy. They feel that with time and with their effort they can truly change the world if others do help and contribute and give a helping hand. They are sensitive, they are helpful and will go out of the way to solve life's different problems for others and usually their means are also through being very charitable, helpful and giving very caring. Usually these people will be very reserved with their emotions but when they are not able to hold back then the emotions will overwhelm them and then they will be freely showing what their emotions are. They can then be very feel elated at one moment and sometimes very dejected at the other moment almost like a switch is turned on and turned off. These, these people can be very expressive and also come across as very temperamental or moody to others. Now say moon is Vargotama, it is placed in the Pisces sign in the D9 chart, Namamsa and it is in the Pisces sign in the D1 chart, in the Lagna chart also. Then these people can be the extreme examples of the Pisces energies. They may go out of their way to help others even at high cost to themselves and will find happiness in their contributions to others even overlooking their own challenges, own losses. These people will send a, seldom miss a chance to help others, especially the sick, the old and especially children. And these people can sometimes lose focus on what is real and practical in the real world and end up daydreaming about what the ideal situation can be, what the ideal life will be, what the ideal partner can be. And so sometimes can become too lazy when tasks at hand seem to be very difficult to achieve. And so this person can procrastinate as if they have all the time in the world to complete the task at hand and believe in the adage that in the end everything becomes all right. So friends, now that we have seen how moon will act, react, gives 
different results, highly probable results in the D9 chart, in the Navamsa chart. Please see which sign your moon has placed in which house in the Navamsa chart. Connect to the sign and the house in the D1 chart. Look at what the yogas are, doshas are, what conjunctions, conjunctions are, what is the dignity of the moon and through that be able to identify how the moon will act and through that be able to manifest good results for you because this is a strong energy, especially moon's placement in the D9 and the Navamsa chart to be able to do the higher manifestation of the soul itself. So friends, like this video, share this video and if you are looking for a personal consultation for me, please reach out to me, the link is given below. Until some other time with some other video, this is your friend Astrologer and Guided Fund signing off. Ciao.